Greetings, everybody. Yeah, it's Patty here. Um, I'm still doing a little more research and investigating on the uh, missile alert in Hawaii. And um, I found this on IntelliHub. Claim, oops, claim Hawaii charter boat group witnessed explosion in the sky January 19th. A man's sister told him of a group of boaters witnessed an aerial explosion about 100 nautical miles offshore around 8 a.m. last Saturday morning. South Pacific IntelliHub. A man posted a video on YouTube on Sunday in which he claims his sister, who lives on Maui, heard that a group of nine tour boat guides and about 13 tourists witnessed some type, of some type of explosion in the sky about 100 nautical miles offshore, leeward side. They said it looked like a meteor, and then all of a sudden it was a, a big boom and it lit up the entire sky, he explained. It was at 8 o'clock in the morning. Maybe, maybe this wasn't a drill after all. I would think that the United States would not want to cause more panic if they did launch something at Hawaii, they would say it was a mistake. Now on to the next article. Was a nuclear missile attack on Hawaii thwarted by a secret space program? Was a nuclear missile attack on Hawaii thwarted by a space program? This came out January 17th on exopolitics.org written by Dr. Michael Sala okay on Saturday morning January 13th residents of Hawaiian Islands received an emergency alert that warned of an incoming ballistic missile and that everyone uh, was instructed to take cover residents near Honolulu the expected ground zero of any nuclear attack fled for their lives to more remote areas of Oahu, expecting the worst. This is what appeared on people's cell phones at 8.07 a.m., local Hawaii time. Then, after 38 long minutes uh, of sheer terror for many all over the Hawaiian Islands, residents were notified by the emergency alert system that it was all a false alarm. All right, well, we know the bullshit story about someone pressing the wrong button, okay? <laughs> someone had pressed the wrong button, according to local state authorities. Residents were supposed to be reassured that the responsible individual would be reassigned. In an, an inquiry has been launched by the Hawaii governor, David Ige. Mainstream media coverage has exclusively focused on Hawaii state authorities explaining the problem was one person pressing the wrong button. <laughs> I lived in Hawaii for 25 years. Uh, they have fail-safe mechanisms. Okay, so this is bullshit. Anyways, according to an official timeline of events, U.S. Pacific Command uh, notified Hawaii state authorities that there was no missile launch at 8.10 a.m. All right. Local authorities subsequently attempted to inform the public via a number of means that the ballistic missile alert was a false alarm, but it was only at 8.45, 38 minutes after the initial alert, that a second emergency alert was sent over the public alert and warning system announcing the mistake. Was the long delay between warning and and the warning retraction received by resident, Hawaii residents simply the unprecedented foul-up of an emergency alert sent by state authorities? Or was something else happening? My wife and I lived on the big island of Hawaii since 2004. And during our time here, there have been a steady number of emergency alerts. That's true. What he is saying is true. I live there. All right, they're monthly. They go off monthly. They're very loud. They're very obnoxious. 
Uh, okay. And during our time here, they have been as there have been a steady number of emergency alerts issued for hurricanes, tsunamis, flash flooding, and lava flows. Sirens regularly wail at the start of the month. Yes, they do to test the emergency alert system for these kinds of events, and more recently for a possible nuclear missile attack from North Korea. Well, they were going to. Uh, they were going to be blamed for this. <clears throat> the regular occurrence of destructive events and their consequences in the region have led to an emer emergency alert system that is second to none when it comes to providing timely and accurate information to Hawaii residents in potentially life-threatening circumstances. We regularly receive emergency alert updates after the initial event described in an emergency alert. So the explanation that it took 38 minutes to issue an update to, init to the initial false alarm is very hard to believe. The chances that the ballistic missile alert was a simple mistake by one person even further strains credulity. One writer points out how the system is designed to prevent these precise, to prevent this precise mistake. There is no button that could accidentally be hit. There are five, five fail-safe procedures in the Hawaiian Emergency Alert Management System. This I know because I lived there, you guys. I lived there. And I know this to be true information. All right, where was I? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. start over. There is no button that could be accidentally hit. There are five fail-safe procedures in the Hawaiian Emergency Alert Management System. At least being a two-key system, such as are present in U.S. missile silos and on U.S. nuclear missile submarines. Two keys, eight feet apart, requiring two different individuals to simultaneously and positively trigger the alert. So you can see one man accidentally pressing a button is, is, is BS. Can't happen. You need two key, you need two individuals at, e, at each of the two keys at eight feet, eight feet apart simultaneously and positively triggering the alert. That's how it works. So, this is why uh, alternative media reports an intercepted nuclear missile attack. Uh, I'm sorry, this is why alternative media reports of an intercepted nuclear missile attack needs to be considered, since it raises another scenario that better fits the sequence of events on that Saturday morning. Now, remember when I uh, posted that video uh, Israel is missing one Dolphin 2 submarine. This one, this video. Israel is short a Dolphin 2 submarine. Update, new evidence. With very good reason, I repeat. Israel is now short a Dolphin 2 submarine. And anyone with, different, with a different story is full of it. And if you haven't seen this video, um, you might want to go ahead and check it out. All right. Back to here. Missiles were, were detected in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. The launches originated from the same anomaly detected yesterday, January 12th. The missiles were immediately intercepted and destroyed. The anomaly was revealed to be a nuclear stealth submarine. Okay? That's what's missing here. The Dolphin 2 submarine. The nuclear stealth submarine was located and destroyed shortly after the attempted attack. Had to enlarge the page. Okay, the nuclear stealth submarine was located and destroyed shortly after the attempted attack. So now we know where Israel's missing Dolphin 2 submarine went. It got destroyed. 
On January 16th, another author came out saying that the Hawaii event was an intercepted nuclear missile attack. I would take that seriously. After explaining how the emer emergency alert system is designed to prevent the kind of human error claimed by the state authorities, there was a missile. There we go. There was an actual real-life missile launched towards Hawaii the other day. That terrifies the shit out of me. I lived there for 25 years. My son was born and raised there. My son has family there. Uh, my husband's son has family there. So this does not make us feel very comfortable. But what it does make us feel, or me, makes me feel a little bit different about the military, and I'll explain why in a little bit. All right. So there was a missile, probably fired from a submarine under the control of individuals loyal to deep state, like might either Israeli or German. Okay. Well, I think we can eliminate Germany because Israel is the one missing the Dolphin to stealth submarine. That's easy to figure out. The missile was not fired from North Korea or by North Korean forces, but they were going to be blamed, okay? They were going to be blamed, and which would start World War III. These guys are itching. I'm telling you, itching. The deep state itching for World War III. The missile was intercept, intercepted, then the cover-up began. Update, 117.18. An additional alternative news media source corroborating key aspects of the thwarted missile attack against Hawaii is a veteran journalist and orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Dave Janda. He commented in a radio interview about what a deep-level source who has never been wrong over the years he has known him had told him about the Hawaii missile incident. What this source told me was that and again, I've never found this source to be wrong, was that there was an actual missile fired. The missile was brought down by the United States Anti-Missile Program. It was a submarine-based missile. It was from a, well, okay, it says Chinese sub. No. Well, I mean, I guess it could be. I mean, I guess the other article could be, could be wrong. Um... Anyways, but the missile was real. Um, I can't say, I now I can't say for sure if it was Israel, but, you know, because, you know, I'm following the headlines that they're missing a submarine. But maybe it could be Chinese too. So anyways, this was a renegade faction within the Chinese military that was in charge of the sub that fired this missile. And in fact, the Chinese Navy supported, oh, jeepers, creepers, these names, Xi Jinping, current president of China, was the ship that then took out the submarine. Well, that sure didn't make any sense. Okay. Anyways, moving on. If the above scenario actually happened, then it makes sense that an alert was generated after initial missile launch. Then, once the missile had been intercepted, local and federal authorities were informed immediately, only three minutes later. The additional 35 minutes was probably due to the short time it took uh, to find and take out the missile launch system, likely a submarine. Okay, Like I said, I'm still thinking it was uh, Israel. Because they're short of Dolphin 2 submarine. Again, I guess, you know, I guess this could be wrong too. It's me grasping at, at information, trying to put dots together. So, whether it was Israel or China, I don't know. I can't say for certain. But, um, anyways. Okay. We have a little more to go here. Uh. Okay. Oh, I couldn't understand that paragraph, so. If the above, sorry. 
If the above scenario actually happened, then it makes sense that an alert was generated at the initial missile launch, then it was intercepted, and da da da. The additional 35 minutes was probably due to the short time it took, in quotes, see that? Short time, in quotes. Uh, it took to find and take out the missile launch system, likely a submarine, to prevent another missile launch. I guess some of you uh, might be able to find this in uh, some of QAnon's posts, right? Okay. Um, the all clear was then given to issue the additional emergency alert to Hawaii residents while covering up the nuclear attack and takedown. What adds to credibility to this alternative scenario are photos of number of UFOs seen over Hawaii 31, 31 minutes after the second emergency alert. The photos show UFOs that display an advanced technology that may be craft belonging to the United States Air Force secret space program that has broken away from deep state control. Let me click on this. I have a slow ass computer, guys. So sorry. It's snowing. I'm going to pause. Covert disclosure of anti gravity rectangle weapons platforms by the U.S. Air Force, Special, Air Force Special Operations. These things right here. Right? Interesting. Covert disclosure of anti-gravity rectangle, rectangle weapons platforms by the U.S. Air Force Special Operations. Okay, I guess this is for another story. Let's see if there's any... Well, there's a video. Okay, anyways, back to the article. I do like this scenario, though. Um, the U.S. Air Force secret space program. You know, if this story is true, and that they did break away from deep state control, um, I have a lot more respect for the military now. Uh, it, it's time for our military to do what they enlist to do, protect the people, not the government. So, this is hopeful. Hopeful that um, this deep state control will lose their control permanently. All right, another explanation is that the craft were extraterrestrial in origin and follow a decades-long policy of secretly intervening to forestall nuclear weapons incidences as contended by the author Solaris Modalis, okay, who provided the photos, Genesis. Anyways, so I guess this is uh, pictures of the live, no, well, of course, CNN. Okay, um, well, it shows us things up here. You. Look at that. It says, I liked it. You can't do that on this page. So, oh, okay. Might be a little phony baloney here. I mean, <laughs> why does it say, I like it? <laughs> okay. No. Never been to wherever this was posted. I wish I knew if I laughed at it. <laughs> okay, anyways, I'm easily amused. <laughs> well, while, while extraterrestrial intervention is possible, uh, I don't believe in it, guys. Sorry. I, I, I'm not really an alien extraterrestrial believer. Sorry. That's the truth about me. Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't, they don't exist. I'm just saying I don't believe it. And nobody's going to convince me unless an alien walks right into my house. <laughs> you know? <laughs> unless an alien introduces himself to me, personally, mm, I I'll stay skeptic. Okay, while extraterrestrial intervention is possible, 
it is more likely that the highly advanced state of a U.S. Air Force-run secret space program was all that was needed to intervene to thwart the intended false flag attack. Mm. Didn't QAnon say, watch out for false flag attacks? I think he did. In either case, the photos may explain how the incoming ballistic missile was shot down. If alternative scenario is correct, this raises a number of critical who, why, and where questions. As to the who, both alternative news sources refers to a stealth submarine with ballistic nuclear weapons technology. Mm, still sounds like Israel to me. Mm, yeah, sounds like Israel. Clearly this could only have been achieved by a nation or entity in control of submarines equipped with nuclear ballistic weapons. The deep state is referred to in its in the reports as the most likely culprit. That, yeah, okay. Possibly using a nation-state proxy to be able to pin the blame on North Korea in a false flag attempt. Uh, attempt event. As to the as to the why question, a possible answer lies in the December twenty-first executive order passed by President Trump to freeze the financial assets of all involved in human rights abuses and corruption in the U.S. and around the world by cutting off the lifeblood of major deep state actors and proxy groups. The U.S. military, that is, the real power behind the Trump presidency, has declared financial war against the deep state. Gosh, you guys, I hope this is true. I hope the military is now back on our side again. Oh, I mean, what the hell? Everybody in the military has family and friends. Everybody's got a mother. Everybody's got a father, brothers, sisters, daughters, sons, you know, uh, they, that they have to protect, too, you know? Anyways, furthermore, alternative news reports of Guantanamo military prison being expanded in late December 2017 Two host deep states VIPs detained by U.S. Special Forces may have also been a catalyst for the deep state to react with violence, just like they always do. Creeps. It's very possible that the deep state responded to those recent development developments by launching a nuclear weapons attack against Hawaii, which hosts the largest concentration of U.S. military assets anywhere in the world. Remember that. Hawaii hosts the largest concentration of U.S. military assets anywhere in the world. If so, it is fortunate that the attack was thwarted and the culprits taken out. Most likely by anti-gravity spacecraft, that I just showed you, to a secret space program. Hallelujah. All right. This raises the question of whether there might be future false flag attacks by deep state assets to initiate major regional conflagration and a possible World War III. Boy, these guys want World War III so bad. So bad. Oh, not quite there yet. <laughs> okay. I had a little computer hiccup. Well, this raises the question of whether there might be future false flag attacks by deep state assets to initiate major and regional conflagration and possible World War III. Such a possibility was alluded to by the anonymous whistleblower QAnon, whose post. <laughs> I did it again! <laughs> okay. Uh, the anonymous whistleblower QAnon. I'm sorry, I'm eating breakfast. Uh, who posted a cryptic warning on January 14th that implied the Hawaii event was one of the major false flag events this coming week. week. Okay. Um, that's the report. That's the QAnon. I don't see the implication to Hawaii. Um... 
I just this one. Beware of major false flag attempts. Okay, he just said attempts. And that's the word I needed to see. Alright. So. Okay. And then the, then the sirens, the alarms going off in Japan, uh, recently too. Beware of major false flag attempts. Plural. Anyways. On January 16th, this, this bad, this bad, these bad people, New York Times, <laughs> uh, report referred to another false alarm. This time in Japan, where residents were warned of a major by a major TV broadcaster that to take shelter from an incoming ballistic missiles. Ah. All right. So, uh, Japan's public broadcaster on Tuesday ac accidentally, oh boy, uh, accidentally sent news alerts with North Korea, or that North Korea had launched a missile and that citizens should take shelter. Boy, they're trying to blame North Korea, aren't they? They really are. They're trying to jam North Korea. I feel sorry for little Kim. <laughs> they are setting him up. Just two days after the government of Hawaii had sent a similar warning to its citizens. Could the Hawaii and Japan false alarms be the first two attempts, like attempts, at major false flag events orchestrated by the deep state? that have been thwarted by the U.S. military and its off-world aliens? It's possible that what really happened on January 13th and January 16th in Japan, including the mainstream media explanation of human error, may have been intended as a threat to the U.S. military and Trump administration to step back from the financial war and the extraction of deep state VIPs taken to get mo. Why don't they? Why don't they get more VIPs and take them to get mo? It's hard to imagine the U.S. military and Trump backing down after their initiatives in late December 2017, especially if there really was a missile attack against Hawaii. The possibility of potential false flag military att attacks orchestrated by the deep state gives powerful incentive to government authorities to cover up what really happened on the morning of January 13th, and possibly also to Japan on January 16th. The possible involvement of the secret space program, most likely acting alone or with, or with extraterrestrial ex assistance, or whatever, Okay, in thwarting false flags on Hawaii and or Japan provides confidence that future false flag attacks using conventional military technologies are unlikely to succeed. Hallelujah. But, you know, I mean, it's nice to see the military is actually doing what the military is supposed to do protect the people and in this case I think that's exactly what they did all right and um, I'm gonna keep following this until I can gather up enough conclu conclusive evidence that this in fact was really a nuclear missile attack on Hawaii that got thwarted by a secret space program all right everybody <laughs> I didn't mean to go on this long sorry about that but anyways, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and peace to each and every one of you. Until next time.